This video is produced in collaboration with iFi, the NSF AI Institute for Artificial Intelligence and Fundamental Interactions, a US institute which explores the links between artificial intelligence and fundamental physics. Welcome back to Science Click. Today, the physics of artificial intelligence. In recent years, artificial intelligence, or AI, has been spreading throughout society. Chatbots, image generators, but also black hole photograph enhancers and protein structure predictors. On October 8, 2024, John Hopfield and Jeffrey Hinton received the Nobel Prize in Physics for their contributions to this field. But why a Nobel Prize in Physics for artificial intelligence? In this video, we won't be discussing the specific applications of AI, nor the ethical and societal questions it raises, but rather the basic principles behind these algorithms. We'll see that there are unexpected links with magnetism and particle physics. Together, let's dive into the physics of AI. It's 1920 and German physicist Wilhelm Lenz proposes a physics problem to his student, Ernst Ising. The professor asks Ising to study a model for understanding magnetism in certain materials such as iron, which can form permanent magnets. A block of iron is composed of atoms, whose electrons generate tiny magnetic fields called their spins. Roughly put, they can exist in one of two states, up or down. To schematize this structure, Ising considers a grid of atoms, each carrying an up or down spin. He is interested in how this network evolves over time. First of all, the ambient temperature causes the spins to fluctuate randomly. Second, adjacent spins in the grid tend to align, because this configuration requires less energy and is therefore more stable. As time passes, we see magnetic domains in which nearby spins are aligned with each other. Finally, if we add an external magnetic field, all the spins tend to align with this field, transforming the iron block into a large-scale magnet. The icing model thus makes it possible to grasp certain phenomena such as ferromagnetism. To better understand this model, we can imagine it as a marble rolling across a mountainous landscape. The marble's position represents the grid's configuration at a specific moment in time, while its altitude represents the energy associated with that configuration. Over time, the marble rolls towards lower, more stable configurations, as the spins align with each other and the grid relaxes. Let's fast forward a little. It's now 1982 and computer science is booming. American John Hopfield is inspired by the icing model to build a new algorithm capable of memorizing patterns. Rather than atoms, the Hopfield network is now made of artificial neurons, which can be activated or not. These neurons are all connected to each other, somewhat like synapses in a brain. As with the spins, the neurons interact with each other. But this time, each synapse carries a weight coefficient that governs the influence between the neurons it connects. Some synapses have a positive weight, pushing the neurons to adopt the same state. Others have a null coefficient, so the neurons do not influence each other. Others still carry a negative coefficient, pushing the neurons towards opposite states. As before, the network evolves. Each neuron receives a sum of values from each synapse and becomes active or not, depending on a certain threshold. Over time, the network thus progresses towards a more stable situation with lower energy. The great advantage of this model is that it is possible to finally tweak all its parameters. For instance, if we invert these coefficients, the network is no longer in equilibrium and becomes unstable. The energy landscape is affected by this change, 
and as it relaxes back, the network finds a new equilibrium configuration. In other words, tweaking the coefficients of each synapse allows us to sculpt the landscape of configurations as we wish. In particular, we can dig wells around certain configurations of our choice, indicating that these configurations become equilibrium points and that the network must evolve towards one of them. Hopfield thus built a network capable of memorizing patterns, because when released from an initial state, the network naturally converges towards the closest memorized pattern. A powerful tool that allows machines to learn. Over the years, other scientists like Jeffrey Hinton continued to develop this model, gradually leading to the AI we now know. Still today, artificial intelligence is based on these neural networks, in which information is propagated from synapse to synapse. For these networks to function properly, we start by training them using many examples in order to finally tweak their parameters and for them to memorize recurring patterns. This is called machine learning. We've seen so far that physics has influenced the development of artificial intelligence. But it turns out there's another, perhaps less known connection between neural networks and fundamental physics. To understand it, we'll have to open a technical parenthesis. Let's look at this neural network. It takes two input values, transforms them, and produces an output. Overall, the network acts as a mathematical function, taking two inputs and returning an output. We can represent the two input values as a point in two dimensions. Our neural network behaves like a field, assigning a value to every point in space. In physics, fields are very useful for describing temperature in the atmosphere, velocity in a fluid, or even gravity. In our case, the values of the field depend on the parameters of the network. By adjusting them, we obtain different values. Let's focus on one point. The network assigns it a certain value. If we change the network's parameters, we get different outputs. Let's randomly change the coefficients and visualize the superposition of all the values. Among all these numbers, we can see that some appear more often than others. The outputs of the network follow a certain statistical distribution. We are more likely to obtain certain values than others. Of course, the distribution of values is not the same if we look at another point. It also changes if we increase the number of neurons in the network. As the network widens, the distribution evolves. Over time, however, it appears to become smoother and smoother. Surprisingly, the distribution seems to gradually converge towards a bell curve, what mathematicians call a Gaussian distribution. Surprisingly, this is true for all input values. regardless of the number of layers in the network. Thus, almost all neural networks converge towards this type of distribution when they become infinitely wide. All of this has been established for about 30 years. In 1995, Jeffrey Hinton's student Radford Neal discovered that very wide neural networks tend towards Gaussian processes. Fast forward to 2020, and a team of researchers at the newly formed IFI proposed an unexpected correspondence between this phenomenon and the behavior of quantum fields. As we have seen, a neural network can be interpreted as a field assigning a value to every point in space. But in quantum physics, the behavior of particles which make up matter and govern interactions is described by quantum fields, which can be imagined as fields whose values fluctuate randomly. Particles are disturbances that propagate within this quantum field. 
In the simplest model of a quantum field, particles are independent and do not interact with each other. In this situation, the values of the field fluctuate according to a very specific distribution, a Gaussian distribution. In other words, a quantum field without interactions behaves in the same way as an infinitely wide neural network whose coefficients vary randomly. That said, in nature, particles interact with each other, and physicists calculate these interactions by adding small corrections to the previous model. Similarly, in a real neural network, which is not infinitely wide, the statistical distribution of values is not perfectly Gaussian, but slightly different. Small corrections must be taken into account. Corrections that are analogous to those caused by interactions in particle physics. There is therefore a strong analogy between the behavior of neural networks and that of quantum fields. At present, quantum field theory is our best description of the world, but it is extremely complex to calculate. For instance, simulating the behavior of quarks within the nucleus of atoms is already a colossal challenge, even for the most powerful supercomputers. Some physicists now believe that neural networks could offer a new way of approaching these problems. They can already reproduce the statistics of a free field without interactions. More impressively, researchers have also reproduced fields with interactions, such as the 5-4 model, in which particles interact in pairs, or certain models of conformal fields with a certain symmetry. It is a fascinating approach, which is not yet capable of studying realistic situations, but which offers a completely new avenue for tackling certain theoretical problems in particle physics. This correspondence also allows us to study neural networks using tools from physics, such as Feynman diagrams, which are generally used to study interactions between particles. To conclude, there are multiple links between physics and artificial intelligence, and some AI models are already in use. In experimental physics, to denoise gravitational wave signals or analyze data in search of new particles. In theoretical physics, to solve mathematical problems, study the properties of certain quantum fields, or explore the multiple universes of string theory. But also in condensed matter physics, to discover new properties of materials, or simulate phase transitions. And finally in astrophysics, in order to trace the formation of certain structures, reconstruct images distorted by gravitational lensing, or even map the presence of dark matter in galaxies. Conversely, tools from physics can also help us better understand AIs, which are often perceived as black boxes that are difficult to interpret. Physical concepts such as energy landscapes, quantum fields and interactions provide a bridge for translating AI into the language of physics. <laughs>